so it has technically made landfall at this point, but still it's kind of really starting to just now pummel uh, the areas of Yemen that it's there. And when you talked about earlier, it's the terrain of Yemen that really causes a lot of the problem. So let's take a look at that more specifically because the dry, t uh, the dry climate that it's in is going to pose a lot of problems. And here's why. So this would be a normal landscape. You have the green areas, whether it's grass or whatever, when it rains, that fills, it soaks through the grass and down into what we refer to as the ground table. Now, when you have a very arid climate like Yemen is, when the water begins to come in, it acts like a baked surface. So it just sits on that crust layer and is not able to absorb down into the ground. That's where you get a lot of the flooding concern with this particular storm. So that's why, for example, as we take a look at this particular storm, when it finally started to gain strength, and it has, here is a look at the track of the storm as it continues to go through. Now notice once it gets just before landfall, this is typically when it was at its strongest. It had a very defined eye wall. Then as it finally began to make landfall into Yemen, it hits the mountainous terrain that's right there along the coast. That that does is all the rain that comes down along the coastline is there, but all the rain that falls on top of the mountains now flows down into the coastal areas. So you have a lot of inundation of water over the same areas. And because, like we mentioned, that crust is basically just baked, it's very hard. All of that water cannot be absorbed into the ground. So it just sits on that top layer of ground. Here's a look at the current statistics. Right now about 140 kilometers per hour, gusting to around 165. Forward movement still pretty fast, about 15 kilometers per hour. That will change because the storm is expected to weaken very rapidly over the next 24 hours. In fact, should be down to only 55 kilometers per hour in less than 24 hours from now. Now the big concern, once all of the rain finally continues to push through and that dissolves, we also still keep an eye out on the strong winds. Take a look in down into here into parts of the water still expecting 70 to 90 kilometer per hour winds. There's a lot of ships and boats that go through this area about 400 ships a week just in the Red Sea alone. So again you've got to keep an eye on the winds as well not just the rain but the rain especially for the coastal areas is the big concern. Typically average about 80 to 100 millimeters in a year. They're expected to get 2 to 250 millimeters of that in just the first 24 hours of the storm making landfall. So again, that's about tw uh, two to three years worth of the storm. Just for some perspective, the Arabian Peninsula has had three major hurricane equivalent tropical cyclones impact since 2005. Florida, since the same time, has had zero. So again, this is typically an area you see the storms, not necessarily here, but they're actually seen a lot more just since 2005.